Right. I call this meeting to order, please. Ask you all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and, and select a Timniak. If you'd read, lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Let's see. As many of you heard, uh, Fairfield Public Schools are closed tomorrow due to the snow. We'll be making a decision uh, sometime before tomorrow morning on Town Hall and whether we'll be closing Town Hall facilities, but it's anticipated that that will probably be the case. Uh, heading into the meeting, all right, first up are the minutes. To consider and act upon the minutes from the regular meeting of December 20th, 2017. May I have a motion to accept? Make a motion. A second. Second. Uh, any further discussion on the minutes? No, no they look good to me. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes are passed. Thank you. Uh, next up is a reg uh, recognition. All right. Recognition of the Fairfield Fire Union's participation in Operation Warm. I saw Lieutenant Smith here. Are you ready to come up and tell us a little bit about what <coughs> Operation Warm is? Just please introduce yourself. Uh, Bob Smith. Joe Reynes, the president of the Fairfield Firefighter Charitable Foundation. Joe is our treasurer. Uh, both members of Local 1426. Um, how many years? 23. 23, 22 years respectively on the fire department here in town. Uh, Operation Warm our, was one of the programs run by our charitable foundation. We do a number of things throughout the year. About four years ago, we were approached and spoke to one of the social workers at McKinley School, said there was a desperate need for warm winter coats for some of the children that were there so our national organization has a program they work through operation warm org which is a nonprofit uh, we raised some funds we were able to donate uh, 100 brand new coats to the kids at McKinley school this, well, this year again actually this was our third year um, we raised about four thousand dollars to buy the coats ourselves they're all brand new made in the USA coats that come from a company down in Alabama so every child is fitted properly for a brand new coat, they get to pick out the color of the coat they want and they actually write their names in them and they take the coats home free of charge and everybody has a nice warm winter coat for the winter. So we we just finished our third year. We've done about, I'm gonna say 350 coats at McKinley School over the last three years. Uh, we just found out this year there's actually a need over at Holland Hill School, so we're hoping to expand the program into uh, Holland Hill next year. And, you know maybe do 150, 200 coats, depending on how much money we can raise for next year. So that's it. Great. Thank you. Any yeah. comments from my colleagues? No, thank you for doing that. That's fantastic. I know, uh, you know every kid should have a new coat when they start the winter season. Uh, I've got two young kids. They grow so fast. It's hard for parents to keep up with uh, when they're growing out. Last year's coat doesn't fit. And lots of times, uh, you know, kids end up getting the hand-me-downs, which are old, rotten, and dirty. Like, um, so uh, I appreciate the effort as a parent, and I know Holland Hill parents probably do as well. We, um, funny you should say that, because we've, in the last couple of years, we've been in there, and, and Joe's wife, Jen, is part of our team. She's in the back there. But we've seen the coats we gave out two years ago. Some of the kids come in with the older coats, and they got this coat last year, and they get fitted for a new one this year, and they're excited. And, yeah. It's actually been a pretty rewarding experience for us as the team that goes in and represents the firefighters union. Yeah. Mr. Powell? Thank you very much, Bob and Joe. It's wonderful work that you do for uh, for our children at McKinley and expanded to Holland Hill at some point. Um, it, it's just another example of uh, the town of Fairfield, the people who live in the town, the folks who volunteer, the folks that work for our town, the work you do that's well above and beyond the normal duties and responsibilities of your actual job and we thank you very much we're very fortunate to have you and your entire team you know protecting our town but uh, participating in programs like this while you're here is there any website or any additional information that you can provide to our viewers if they want to donate money or, or find a, another way to help your cause yeah, we a lot of our most of our fundraising is done through an online fund page that um, Operation Warm sets up for us so the, mm -hmm. the address for that is Operation Warm dot org slash fairfield it's closed out for this year because our program's done but we okay. usually start kind of like the end of the summer we broadcast it out on our facebook page and through our social media and we can put it on the fire department's page as well so we can get the word out for that for next year but the address was operation warm dot org slash fairfield 
Great. Thanks. All right. And then again, I think this is um, one, I think it's ironic that uh, you spend your day job uh, fighting the heat, and here you are <laughs> providing the heat, when, when in, in very targeted and much needed. Uh, but more importantly, I think this, uh, as uh, Selectman Kiley said, as an example of, of where our firefighters are going above and beyond the call. You don't have to do this. This is not in your job description. And yet you've reached out to a segment of our community, an area that needed help, uh, and you've s taken the time and the effort to address that. Uh, and frankly, without any fanfare, because I had to drag you in here <laughs> to get you <laughs> in front of this to let folks know what you're doing. And I think it's a tremendous compliment to you and your team well, in you. terms of not only what you're doing to literally protect us every day, but look for how you can protect our community in a bigger sense um, in your off-duty hours. So I want to thank you on behalf of the entire town for the effort you put in to do that. Well, thank you for those words. Appreciate right. it very much. And again, if you will, when your website gets set up next year, if you'll let us know, we'll make sure that we get some special recognition here to help you get the word out okay. that that's what you're doing. Very good. And thank you for not only maintaining this, but expanding it out to um, Holland Hill, too. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And next up, we have some additional. I'm sorry. Thank you, Chair. Some additional recognition, um, and this is kind of what's become an annual event for some annual recognition, and it's the in recognition of annual uh, Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. If I could ask the uh, Chief McNamara and Deputy Chief Liddy to come up, and actually, I see anybody else you want, Chief. I didn't mean to limit. Sure. Keith, you want to come up too? Come on, <laughs> I know you're up there. Can you fill us in a little bit on what this is about? So, uh, well, first of all, those of us that are in law enforcement really understand that oftentimes our communities uh, don't really understand the work that we do. And it's, it's really misunderstood because perception of law enforcement is whether or not you got a ticket, whether or not we helped you, or whether or not you watched the television show or a news account of what occurred. And several years ago, uh, on a national level, there was this growing negativity towards law enforcement, uh, really concerning law enforcement on a national level, and really concerning the Concerns of Police Survivors, which is an organization of families who have lost uh, law enforcement officers in the line of duty. So they. Uh, they recognized that it was a significant problem. That negativity, as well as the increasing violence that we've seen towards law enforcement officers, specifically back then targeted ambush of law enforcement officers, meaning killing police just because they are police. Uh, they came up with this January 9th being an annual national event to try and get people to understand that, you know, be appreciative of, of the police officers that are there. Be appreciative of the men and women that that signed up, that took an oath to protect your community. You can't always agree, and you shouldn't always blindly follow us, but at the, at the same time recognize at least once yearly that the men and women that, that serve do so, leaving their house to make your lives safer, hoping to come home at night. And we've seen that sometimes that doesn't occur. That was on a national level. Uh, on a local level, we have such great residents in town that that feel that same uh, passion towards law enforcement. And uh, the posters, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Poster, have been very instrumental here in town with driving that message that we should support law enforcement on a local level. And they um, have continually, at, at a variety of different events, supported us and, and uh, been at different events and, and helped us in, in whatever events that we were doing. So, uh, you, you know, through uh, you, Mr. Tetro, and, and well as, as well as the posters, we're, we're coming together to kind of recognize that. I will tell you that this past year there was 128 police officers killed in the line of duty. That is 10% lower than last year. But uh, one police officer killed is too many. And, and we know as police officers that any one of us in any moment at any time could be the victim of violence. We just saw that in Colorado where five sheriff's deputies were shot, one was killed, uh, responding to a domestic violence call. And those happen in our town and in other communities around us. So we know that it is a dangerous job. 
we accept that but at the same time it's nice to sometimes have the community thank us for our service so that is why we are here well thank you I've got a, a proclamation here for you but before we do that I believe there's a special letter from uh, Jack if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself with the mic and uh, tell everybody about your presentation um, hi, I'm Jack Agin, and um, recently for our school, I go to Fairfield Country Day School. Uh, our whole school, we put together this project. Basically, um, each student wrote on a slip of paper why we appreciate the police and thanking them for everything they do for us, and then keeping our town safe. And we just like to thank you so much for keeping us safe and protecting us. Well, thank you very, very much. Here, here. Thank you. <laughs> This is great. We will uh, place this at our booking area so officers can, when they go out on the road, pull something from this to, to recognize the, the thoughts and, and well wishes that you provide to us. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. And Chief, are there any other comments you wanted to make? Uh, you, you know, I, I, and I don't know whether anybody else wants to make one. It's really important to note that uh, while uh, I am here, the deputy chief's here, and Lieutenant Keith Broderick here, who's uh, the lieutenant and the president of the union, it really is on a day-to-day -day basis, 24 hours a day, men and women in patrol cars, preparing for storms, in storms, during holidays. There is always someone in the town of Fairfield in a police uniform that's out there responding to calls for service and that's what this is about it's to say thank you on a broad level for everybody that's out there really trying to make it safe so it really the, my hats off to the men and women that, that I work with every day because I, I owe a lot of thanks to them so I think that's an important comment and especially coming off the holidays we just had a Christmas holiday we just had a New Year's holiday uh, and I want to recognize you and our firefighters uh, because as much as we're home enjoying the holiday and we get a day off or a couple days off or the weekend off, uh, your comrades don't, your teammates don't. There's somebody always on duty protecting our residents and protecting the town. Uh, and sometimes when we are home unwrapping Christmas gifts, you don't think of the fact that firefighters and police officers are out there and potentially in the bitter cold that we've been experiencing the past few days doing their job. It's one thing. We can stay inside. You don't get the chance to do that. So, again, on behalf of the town, thank you very much. And we should mention the telecommunicators and, yes. uh, and others that are out there. Yes, Most gotcha. definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Well, and, and as well as our public works folks that are out there doing the job <coughs> in the cold. Any comments from my colleagues? I, I mean, Law Enforcement Day, Appreciation Day is something which should happen every day. Uh, I, I fully support everything you do. I recognize the hardships you have when you're away from your families serving. Uh, our community uh, and uh, you know too many people take it for granted they really do uh, and I wish there was more positive news we could get out there I wish the news media would focus on the positive stuff our law enforcement and our public safety officials do across the country uh, unfortunately it just it seems to be more negative news coming out and what happened in uh, Denver recently uh, is nothing more than a tragedy so um, I'm with you guys. Appreciate everything you do. All right. Mr. Carly. Yes. Thank you to you and your entire team. Um, you protect us. You serve us. You do it with dignity. Um, and, and you do it with professionalism. We really appreciate everything you do. Uh, 24 hours, 365 days every year. And that's an important point for us all to remember the hard work that happens when we are home celebrating with our families and doing things like that if I could I just I, I took a minute and I went on to the uh, the LEAD the uh, law enforcement appreciation day website and there's a number of ways that they recommend that we start to recognize and thank you folks and I just like to read a couple of them you know the day is actually next it's the ninth right uh, is the actual official day and I'm sure Mike will mention that um, but a couple things that struck out that we can do not just next week but every day you know um, things like wear blue clothing in support of you guys next week right 
send a card of support to our local police department like these young um, men and women just did and thank you for doing that that's a great gesture um, we could share stories about a positive experience we've had with our police department on social media it's a great way to get the word out so that people can understand everything that happens not just what they see on on the TV and and, and reading the news right uh, writing letters to the uh, editor to uh, to show our support and probably displaying blue lights um, on your behalf but most importantly what we can do today next week and every day is to thank you for your service thank you, thank you. and uh, I've got a proclamation here that we'll present uh, just a moment but and I won't read the entire thing in, in deference to everything you've said so far but it does declare uh, January 9th 2018 uh, as law enforcement appreciation day throughout the town of Fairfield so congratulations gentlemen let's present this This in, this in no way suggests that we're going to have any easier on the budget this year. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, it, it would, I know I mentioned that at the beginning, but it really um, does beg to take a little separate time to notice Doc, uh, Dr. Poster and Mr. Poster. Um, they have been advocates of, of us in, in the town of Fairfield as well as locally and nationally. Um, they reach out to the family of every officer in the country killed in the line of duty and provide support to those families. So we have very caring individuals in the town of Fairfield that not only uh, help us, but also touch those families at a time when they really need help. The number 128 is a number, but you, you, that's 128 families. And to have members of the Fairfield community reaching out to all 128 families, not just this year, years or prior, I, mean, I think it really shows a lot to what we have in our community and at the same time goes a long way. So I cannot speak enough of the value and the friendship and support that the posters have given us uh, right here in town. So I just, if we could give them maybe a round of applause. I think well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, moving on. Next up, item six is a resi resignation. This is for information only from the Economic Development Commission. Raymond Meglio, uh, you unaffiliated from 345 Rock Ridge Road, term 1116 to 1121, and the resignation date was January 1st, 2018. Item seven, appointments. To so here, consider and act upon the following appointments. Uh, first, the Affordable Housing Commission. Vicki Cooper, Democrat, 93 Division Avenue, term 1115 to 1119, and this is to fill a vacancy created by the passing <coughs> of Robert Frigo. I have a motion to accept. So moved. A second? Second. All right. Any comments from the board? No, I appreciate your willingness to serve. Absolutely. All right. I don't think Vicki's here. I'll do. Yeah. All right. But, um, all right. Mr. Kelly, I'd just thoughts? like to thank her for volunteering. She's got a great background, and I'm sure she'll do a great job. Yeah, I had uh, a great conversation uh, with uh, Ms. Cooper. She's an attorney. She's worked in uh, Stanford, New Haven, uh, and I think she's going to bring a lot to, uh, to this housing committee. So uh, looking forward to having on it. Uh, any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Next up, 
uh, to here consider and act upon uh, the following appointment to the Historic District Commission. This also requires RTM approval, and it's George E. Clark, Republican, 174 Old South Road, for term 1116 to 1121, uh, and that's as an alternate, and that's to fill a vacancy for Rosina Negron, who uh, is moving up to full member. I have a motion to accept. Make a motion. A second. Second. Any comments from the board? I appreciate George, who is here today, uh, your willingness to continue to serve the town of Fairfield and all that you've done. Uh, I appreciate it. I all right. Mr. Kiley. George, thank you very much for volunteering again. We do appreciate your service and your expertise and your willingness to serve our town. And same from here, I think I want to build on both my colleagues' comments. And Mr. Clark, you and I had a conversation about six months ago or so, I think, yes. uh, when you were under consideration for a possible appointment. So I thank you for staying interested. <laughs> uh, and uh, being around to uh, fill us in when the opening came up. Uh, and again, thank you for volunteering your time. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. We ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Clark, thank you, and thank you for volunteering. Uh, I should point out that uh, you still need to uh, attend the RTM meeting to do this. If you could follow up with Kathleen Griffin, my office, she'll fill you in on what the RTM expects. All right. Uh, next up, from the Osborne Hill School Building Committee, to here consider and act upon a request from the Osborne Hill School Building Committee to disband. Uh, let's start. May I have a motion to accept that? So moved. And a second? Second. All right. May we have a presentation from the Osborne Hill School Building Committee? <laughs> Hi. Welcome back. Thank you very much. I'm finally here. Yep. If you would just introduce yourself to the public. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kim Marshall, 180 Brookbend Road, Fairfield, the chair of the building, of the Osborne Hill Building Committee. Um, <clears throat> as chair of the Building Committee, I am pleased to announce the completion of the remediation and upgrading of Osborne Hill El Elementary School. Below is a list of the major uh, elements of work performed at the school remediation of hazardous materials, window and door replacements, renovation of the gymnasium, new flooring in several locations, and enclosure of the walkway uh, to the annex with security fencing. The total uh, project budget was revised to $4,535,646. The project was completed with approximately 252000 remaining in the project budget. This project now meets the requirements of the education specification of the Osborne Hill Elementary School that was approved on January 15, 2013. I can confirm that all documents, drawings, training, owner's manuals, and reports have been met and submitted to the facility managers at Fairfield Public Schools Central Office. The closeout documentation has been filed with the Office of School Construction Grants and Reviews, formerly the Office of School Facilities. The successful completion of this project is due to the collaborative efforts of the project team that consisted of Fairfield Public Schools staff, Osborne Hill Elementary School administration and staff, particularly um, principal, the Osborne Hill School Building Committee, town staff, and our project team consisting of Silver, Petroselli, and Generini Construction. I would like to recognize the members of the Osborne Hill School Building Committee for their tireless efforts and dedication to the successful completion of the project. Bill Dunn, the vice chair, Susie Cardona, Steve White, and uh, Brett Botter. I believe that the Osborne Hill Elementary School with the, com with the completion of this project meets all the requirements uh, of the education specifications for the school. On behalf of the Osborne Hill School Building Committee, I request that our committee is formally discharged from the duties of this project. Thank you. Any comments from the board? Oh, thank you for all the work you put in, the countless hours. Uh, many many meetings I appreciate it. i know the students of osborne hill do as well so. thank you 
thank you. Thank you very much to you and your entire team. It, it, the school looks great. You did a lot of hard work there over five years, right? It took a long time to get all that done. And every time a challenge came up, you met it and you completed it. And we're very proud of you. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. One quick question. If, if, do you have, a, have you given this presentation or uh, turned the project over to um, the Board of Ed yet? Has the Board of Ed voted to accept the project? Uh, yes. Yes, that should be in the back of Okay, very good. Um, and yeah, it, uh, this was the first. Uh, you kind of like for the, for the, uh, in, the, in the annals of building committees, you're going to go down as the Marines because you guys were the first guys on the beach to take on PCBs. And that's really what kicked this whole thing off, and it went from a small windows replacement project to a major school renovation project. Uh, as we all learn together, the impact of PCBs, how widespread they were, how many different kinds of building materials they were used in over how many years. Um, so thank you for kind of being on literally the bleeding edge of that uh, initiative it, to it, get it everything done. It did feel like that, especially uh, for about a year or so. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was major community communication that had to take place, and thank you for managing that with the Osborne Hill community, uh, both the uh, parents and everybody on the outside, but also with the students, teachers, and administration on the inside as we went through all that. So, uh, and as my colleague said, um, certainly above and beyond the call in terms of what you signed up for a few years back. <laughs> so, and I know we've had multiple conversations about this on and off. So I know you've been working not only at the building committee meetings, but uh, above and beyond that. So I want to thank you uh, for what only your committee did, but also what you individually did as part of this. Well, thank you very much. I, I, uh, it was an honor to be on the committee, and uh, it was a learning experience because of the, um, the hazardous materials, uh, but we're glad it's finished and uh, glad that everyone can enjoy it. All right, thank you. Um, any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Are ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Congratulations. And, and good luck in Thank your retirement you. from volunteer service. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did you say reassignment? Uh, all right. Uh, next up from the tax collector uh, to consider and act upon tax refunds as recommended by the tax collector and the amount recommended. We have a motion to accept, a second. Second. All right, and I believe, not the silence before us, so I believe we have to amend this item. Yes, yes I'll move to amend item 9 to include, um, to strike the word recommended and to add the words in the amount of $17,420.35. Is there a second? A second it. Any further discussion? No. All right, the item as amended is before us. Uh, any further discussion? No. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, next up, to hear, consider, and act upon any <coughs> other business that shall properly come before this meeting. Uh, I'm not aware of any. Gentlemen? Happy New Year to everybody at home. Yes, very definitely. Happy 2018. That's right. Yeah. Uh, just about to complete the first Board of Selectmen meeting in 2018. <laughs> and um, wow. All right. On the way. Um, I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy New Year all around. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.